What better time than to get ready for the spring with a little deep cleaning? Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Samantha Perlman and I'm a realtor located in central New Jersey. I've been talking a lot on this channel about spring cleaning, spring cleaning tips, spring decluttering, and today I'm gonna to be talking about spring deep cleaning. You see, we're all quarantined right now. So what we're finding is a lot of us have a lot of extra time on our hands. So what better time than to get ready for the spring with a little deep cleaning? I can't be the only one that gets really excited about deep cleaning. Here are the top 10 areas you should be deep cleaning in your house every spring. Number one your tile grout. I'm talking your bathrooms, your flooring, and even your backsplash. You wanna give everything a once over, especially if you have really little tiles like I have in my bathroom and it is a big pain, so I don't clean them regularly. But I do deep clean them at least once a year. Number two, move your appliances. I'm talking about moving your washer and dryer, pulling it away from the wall, making sure you clean underneath and behind it. The same as you would do for your furniture for spring cleaning. I had mentioned that in a previous video. You wanna do that with your appliances. The same thing with your refrigerator and especially your stove. If you have any cracks between your stove and your counter, you would be amazed at the amount of food that can build up there, even in just a year. So you wanna make sure that you move all your appliances out and you really clean underneath and behind and get them all nice and wiped down. Number three, your mattress. Now's the best time to rotate your mattress or flip it over if you can and give it a good clean. Vacuum off the surface, sprinkle baking soda over top. You can even drip a couple drops of essential oils and let that sit for a couple of hours and then vacuum it all up again after. It's one of those areas that we don't really think about a lot, right? We change our sheets and we wash our sheets and our comforters and our pillows, but a lot of times we sweat through the sheets onto the mattress. So you wanna make sure you give it a good cleaning at least once a year. Number four, window blinds. Now I remember being a kid watching my mother every spring take all the blinds down in our house. They would all go into our bathtub and they would all get a really good scrub down and soaking. And then of course they would come out and they would hang outside to dry and then they'd all go up back up on the windows. Now that's a really long process. But the reality is our blinds catch a lot of dirt and dust and build up over the year. So you wanna pay attention to them and make sure you give them a really good cleaning. Whether that's old school in the tub like my mother used to do, or even just taking a microfiber cloth and wiping them down. You wanna make sure though that you wipe each individual blade and really clean it up. Number five your carpets and your area rugs. Now you probably vacuum your rugs and your carpets on a regular basis, but do you shampoo or steam them? You wanna make sure you do that at least once or twice a year, especially if you have pets. So now is the time to rent that shampooer and shampoo your rugs or steam clean your rugs and really get out all that built up dirt and odor. Number six, your fridge and pantry. Now you're probably saying, well Sam, you said a couple of videos ago to clean out my fridge and pantry and I already did that. What I'm talking about isn't just about cooking food that's gonna be expiring or throwing out anything that's too old. I'm talking about when you're taking everything out to sort through it, that you're actually wiping everything down. Give the whole inside of your refrigerator a really good wipe down and definitely do that in your pantry and in your spice cabinet. I realized the last time I did my spice cabinet, I took everything out that all my spices had spilled, so it really needed a good you know, cleaning. So do a nice wipe down of your pantry and your refrigerator. And if you have built up ice in your freezer, now's um, also the time that you want to defrost it, get it all wiped down and put everything back in. This way it helps ensure it's working as efficiently as possible. Number seven, wipe down your walls. Now we're always dusting and vacuuming and cleaning and I talked about your blinds and in a previous video I talked about cleaning your light fixtures and your ceiling fans. But one of the things people never seem to remember that they need to clean is their walls. The dust and dirt actually can build up on your walls as well. So I've seen a lot of things online about, you know, using a mop and different cleaning solutions and things like that. And I say you don't really need to overcomplicate it. What I do is I actually take a floor, a very clean microfiber floor mop like this one. And I just use that to wipe up and down on the wall. Sometimes I just use my hand, but for the taller areas, you know, I'll use the mop on the stick. And I don't even, honestly, I don't even wet it. I find that just using that, it catches a lot of the dust anyway, and it does the job pretty well. So sometimes you just need to do that. That's better than nothing. And when you're cleaning your walls, don't forget your baseboards. And one of the other places, a lot of dust 
builds up is your vents. So if you have forced heat or air, central air conditioning, your vents, either in your ceiling or your walls or your floor, they also get a lot of dust built up on them. So you wanna make sure that you have all of those nice and wiped down and clean. Number eight, your doormats. Now, I mentioned area rugs earlier, but this is specific to doormats, both inside and outside. It's actually recommended that you have a doormat both on the inside and outside to help eliminate as much dirt from coming in your house as possible. So certainly if you have one on the inside when you're cleaning all your area rugs, you wanna make sure you can clean that as well. A lot of them can actually go right in the washing machine. But don't neglect your outdoor mat either. Make sure that you sweep this off, you shake it off, you get rid of any of the dirt or debris that's collected on it over the last you know, few months, over the winter months, and make sure it's nice and clean so you're not tracking any of that dirt inside. And if your outdoor doormat is really old and faded and kind of gross looking, this is also a perfect opportunity to replace it with a nice, fresh, new one. You would be surprised how much just a clean, bright, welcoming doormat changes the entire first impression of your home. And while I'm on the subject of mats, if you didn't clean your bath mats when you did your area rugs, you also wanna make sure you clean all of your bath mats as well. That's another item that I don't think we typically clean on a regular basis, or maybe that's just me. So you wanna make sure that you, every few months, you're taking your bath mats, you're giving them a good shake and a good cleaning. And if they can throw it, go in your washing machine like mine do, go ahead and throw them in, in there as well. The last thing you want is to step on a dirty mat after you've taken a nice shower. Number nine your garage and your shed. As you prepare for the spring and summer months, there's probably a lot of things you're gonna have to do on the exterior of your home, such as landscaping and cleaning up, etc. So you wanna make sure your garage and your shed is nice and cleaned out and organized and ready to go. Get rid of anything that's broken, get rid of any old projects that you're never gonna finish anyway, and make sure all your landscaping tools and equipment is up and running and in good working order. That way you know where everything is when the time comes. Number 10, garbage can. Now, last but not least, you wanna clean up your garbage cans. I know this seems a little silly because you throw garbage in them, but if you've got a lot of garbage and dirt and build up in your garbage cans, as the weather turns nice and the temperatures begin to rise and it becomes warmer outside, any rotting food or anything that's been built up in your garbage can can really start to stink. So now that the weather is nice, now that you've turned your, you know, the water to your outside hoses back on, you wanna make sure you rinse out and clean out your garbage cans. It's also gonna help deter critters and creatures from wanting to get into your trash cans. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you found this information helpful. You know, I've been talking a lot on this channel about getting ready for spring, decluttering, deep cleaning, etc. because a lot of us are stuck in our houses and we've got this extra time on our hands, so no time like the present. So I really hope that you found this information helpful. If there's an area of your home that you plan on decluttering for this spring, go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. Maybe I'll add it to my list. I hope everybody is staying safe out there. If you haven't already done so, consider hitting that subscribe button below and the bell so you don't miss the new videos I release every week. And I promise in future videos, I will be getting back to real estate related topics. I'm just enjoying a lot of the home checklist ideas that I've got in my head right now. So I wanted to share them all with you. And certainly if you have an idea for a future video, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. I'll see you next week.